There it is. Okay. So I have minus one third minus five sevenths. All right, so I'm multiplying two fractions. Multiplying two fractions there. First off, what's going to happen with the signs? They're both negative. What do two negatives multiplied become? Yeah, two negatives multiply to be positive, don't they? Two negatives make positive. So, um, why? Good, you're getting the hang of this, because it's true. I'll show it in a minute, but for now, let's just do it. So anyway, so it's positive something, and then how do we find the number? What do we do? Do we need to get a common denominator? A common denominator. No. Oh. Good question. Is it when we cross? No. Manuel, right? Manuel? Manuel. Manuel. Wants to know, what, why, why, yeah, should we get a common denominator? Why not? Because we're not adding it. So we only have to get common denominators for adding? For adding and subtracting. Adding and subtracting? Common denominators only for adding and subtracting? Is that right? And multiplying? Maybe dividing? No? Is that, is that the rule? You guys are like, we're paying you to tell us. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's a long question. That's a word by Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adding, subtracting, common denominators. Multiplying, dividing, not needed. Why? Because <laughs> yeah. Mr. Heron says so. That's always the best reason. No, that's not a good reason at all. Uh, because it's true, I'll show you why in a second. Let's just do it, and then we'll talk about it. So for multiplying, all you got to do is just multiply the... My little thing is... Uh-oh. There we go. You just multiply top times the top. One times five is five. And bottom times bottom. Two times seven is 21. Done. Don't need to mess with making the two denominators the same or any of that. Just go straight, straight. Top times top, bottom times bottom. No need to make those two fractions have the same denominator. Because... Oh, they go horizontal? Yeah, just straight. Top with top, bottom with bottom. Yeah. When you're multiplying fractions. That's right. So... You, here, let's go to a fresh screen. Let's talk about it. When you add, and maybe that'd be a good thing to put on the sideboard too. When you add subtract fractions, common denom. When you multiply, no common denom needed. So no common denominator is needed. Add, subtract fractions. Common denominator. Multiply. And we'll get to dividing in a minute. No common denom need it. Okay, so there is a difference, isn't there? Now, why, why that's the truth? Let me show you. Think about real life. Just be real with this for a minute. What if I had a half of a pie, and then later I had a third of the pie? How much total pie did I have? How much of the pie is gone? Well, can I... If I just added straight, let's suppose we thought, well, what? Just, we don't need that common denominator stuff. Just add straight, right? One plus one is two. Two plus three is five. You had two-fifths of the pie. Could that be the truth? How do you know, all fancy math rules aside, that that just ain't right? How do you know? Think about real pies now. Yeah, how much is that? Picture, picture the pie. This is a half, right? There's half the pie. Picture this one. This is a third, so I don't know, like that. So one-third of the pie. And this is what? The add-up. And this is two-fifths, so you'd have to break it into five. I don't know. Two, three, like kind of like that, I guess. And so it'd be like two-fifths. Does that look right? That's <laughs> it's hard to tell my scribbling drawing. 
two fifths. Let me ask this: Is that is two fifths what they add up to equal supposedly? Two fifths. Is that more than a half or less than a half? If there's five pieces and you eat two of them, it's less than a half, isn't it? How could you take a half, add some more, and get less than a half? You have a lot of skits. Kids do that. So that's craziness, right? We all agree. Yeah. Yeah. That's not just math teachers making up weird rules. That's just craziness. That's just not true to the world, is it? So, okay, so first off, that's not right, right? You can't do that. But, so, so then what do you do? How are you going to add a half and a third? You've got to make the bottoms the same. In other words, if you're talking, let, let's, let's draw a picture of it. I don't want to use too much time on this, but I want to make it real for you. So there's, there's a half of the pie, Right? Now, there's another way to make half of the pie. What I can do is I can break the whole thing into six even pieces. Like that. So there's six even pieces. And so a half of the pie... Isn't that a half? Isn't that a half of the pie? Which is what? what what's another way you can say how much of the pie is, is colored there? Three, six. Three, six, huh? You're tra tracking with me? Now, what is one-third of the pie? Can you picture one-third? Isn't this one-third? Because, because there's two, two, two. Two, two, two. So that's one-third of it. Huh. You with me? So that means this and this, these together make one-third or two-six. Same thing, huh? And so put them all together, how much of the pie is there? How much is total shaded? Five pieces out of six. That's just true, isn't it? Do you see the truth of that? How that's really right? So, what, so how, did we, how did we combine those? We had to get common denominator. We had to make it out of six pieces to add them. That's what's true, isn't it? Do you all see that? What would I do now? That, now I'm not going to draw pictures every time. But mechanically, what did we do there? We just multiplied top and bottom of this one by 3 to make it 3, 6. And top and bottom of this one by 2 to make it 2, 6. And then their bottoms matched, right? 2, 6 and 3, 6. 3, 6 and 2, 6 made 5, 6. So that's why we make the bottoms the same because it's true. It's how you would really add things up. All right. So for adding, subtracting fractions... You got to have a common denominator. Multiplying, though, it's not needed. It's not needed at all. all right. So, so we're taking seven ninths, and they're saying find the reciprocal. So, what would it be? What's the reciprocal? Yeah, you flip it. That's that's all reciprocal means is you flip it upside down. Nine sevens. That is the reciprocal. So find the reciprocal. All right, just flip it upside down. Yeah. Oh, right. Do not change the sign. Just leave. If it was negative, it stays negative. If it's positive, it stays positive. No sign changing. Exactly right. Natalia, right? Uh, you just flip it upside down. Don't mess with the sign at all. Okay. So we're dividing now. I don't know if you can tell in the middle. That's not a plus sign, right? It's divided. It's just we're divided. Is this number six? Is that what it was? Yeah. Six. So number six, I believe. And uh, we're, we're divided. So how do you divide two fractions? Yeah, you have to flip the one on the right. Do you remember that rule? Have you seen that before? You gotta flip this guy. Flip. Um, what's there's there's like a catchy little saying. What is it? Um, keep change flip. That's it. Have you heard that before? Keep change flip. So you keep this one the same. You change the sign in the middle to times, and you flip the one on the right. So this is how we divide. Keep, if you can see my writing there, keep, change, flip. So keep the first one, change to times in the middle, flip the one on the right. You with me? Keep, change, flip? All is well? Why? Because it's true. Because it's true. <laughs> Just give that answer. It's all good. Just say because it's true. Mr. Han will keep moving. That's all you got to say. Yeah. Dividing is upside down multiplying, isn't it? What am I talking about? If I said, hey, 
I, I ate half a cookie. I said, oh, really? Well, you know what I did is I broke the cookie in two. I divided by two. Those are the same thing, huh? To do half of something is to divide it by two, isn't it? Multiplying by half and dividing by two are the same thing, aren't they? Dividing is upside down multiplying, isn't it? So that's why when you have dividing, you change it to multiplying, but you flip the one on the right. It's upside down. Dividing is upside down. Keep change flip. And now, and now what do we do? Do I have to get a common denominator here? Do I have to make them both seven? No. no. Multiplying, no common denominator needed. Right? No common denominator needed. So what do we do then? We just go straight. We just go 6 times 2 is 12. And keep the negative there. 7 times 1 is 7. Done. It's okay to leave the top bigger. There's no problem with it. We'll leave it just like that. So keep change flip for dividing. Let's put that up there too. Dividing is keep change flip. Questions on that? Not making sense? All right. Problem. Please. All right, so this is number, it's eight, right? Was it eight? I keep forgetting what number it is. It was eight? Okay. Eight. So number eight here. So we're multiplying. So are we dividing? We're not dividing. So we're not going to do the keep change flip. That's just for dividing, right? So I'm not dividing. I'm just multiplying. Now, there's two ways, an easy way and a hard way that you could do this problem. Let me do it the hard way first off to show it's hard, and then we'll go back and do it the easy way. So don't write this down. Don't write down. This is not the best way to do the problem. So you could... Now, do I need to get common denominators? It's multiplying. What's the answer? No. No. No, no. Only if they were adding, subtracting, you need common denominators. But if they're multiplying, no common denominator, huh? No common. So what do you do then? Now, again, don't write this down. This is not the easy way. Although it's true, it's the hard way. It's top times top. Isn't that what we did in the last problem? Mm -hmm. And bottom times bottom. Now, that's, that's true, but it's a terrible way to do the problem. It's not wrong. Kind of like if I go home tonight, and before I pull into my driveway, I circle the neighborhood five times. That's not illegal. I, I, I won't get a ticket for it, but it's not the best way to get home. Right? That's what this is. This is not wrong, but it's not the best way to get the answer. So I'll just do I want to show you the bad way, then I'll show you the good way. So 5 times 32, I think that's 160. 8 times 15, what is that? 120? Yeah, 120. And oh, uh, two negatives made positive. Everybody see that? Negative and negative made positive. So that's right. It's not wrong. Like circling the neighborhood is not illegal. But, but now what do I have to do? Now you've got to do a bunch of, don't write this down, now you've got to do a bunch of simplifying. First off, you know, you can divide by 10 to get rid of those zeros and get 16 over 12. And then what goes in 16 and 12? Four. Divide by 4 and you get 4 thirds. And that is the answer. We, we made it home. But that's not the fastest way home. Let's go back and do it a quicker way. So notice what I had to do there. I got really big numbers and I had to reduce afterwards to bring it down to my answer. So the better way to get home, to get to the answer, is what? You tell me. What is it? Cross cancel, huh? Yeah, whatever you want to call it, cross cancel. So like 8 goes into 32 four times. You know what we're really doing there? We're simplifying early instead of simplifying late. All that is is simplifying. What did I really do there? I just divided this by 8 and divided that by 8. That's what I really did. That's just simplifying. There's nothing magical about cross-canceling. It's simply simplifying. And now we can do the 5 and the 15 as well, huh? Right? So here, let me get rid of these 8 so it doesn't get too cluttered up here. And then, um, yeah, so then we'll go 5 into 15 three times. There it is. Four-thirds, much quicker way to get home, right? So do cross-canceling when you can because it it's, makes it easier. It's quicker. You simplify while the numbers are small instead of after they're big. It's just early simplification instead of late simplification. That's all cross-canceling is. So cross-cancel. By the way, it's not cross-multiplying, 
Cross multiplying is when you have an equals in the middle. We'll get to that later in the course. If you have, if you have like two fractions, two-thirds is x over seven, you cross multiply with equals in the middle. We'll get to that later. But this is cross canceling when they're multiplied by each other. It's just simplification. That's all it is. All right. Let's see. Let's try that one. Okay, number 14. Let's try that one. So minus 5 times minus 3. Two negatives there, or I'll do it down here. Two negatives there, positive regular 15, huh? All right, two negatives make a positive. Oh, I never showed why. Anyway, we'll get back to that. So two negatives do make a positive, because Mr. Heron says so. No, that's not a good reason. And then two negatives there, negative two times negative one, positive as well. Two negatives multiply to be positive, because it's true. And then 17, we're done. All right, let me show you why. Why, why two negatives are positive. Two, ne two negatives multiplied. That's what we're talking about, right? These are two negatives multiplied. Two negatives multiplied. Why are two negatives multiplied positive? Well, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna show you the pattern. Let's take um, negative three times 3. What is negative 3 times 3? Minus, minus 9, right? 1 negative is negative, right? Okay, and I'm going to follow the pattern. Times 2. What's negative 3 times 2? Minus, minus six. 6. What's negative 3 times 1? Three. Negative 3. What's negative 3 times 0? Zero? 0. 0. Anything times 0 is 0. Now, what, what comes next? Do you see the pattern? See the pattern I'm following? Right? Math is, just, math is just patterns. That is all math is, really. 3, 2, 1, 0, what's next? Negative 1. Negative 1, right? Now, suppose we have no idea. Don't do the rule. I'm trying to prove the rule. So we can't use the rule. That's called circular reasoning. We can't do that. Right? You know what I mean? You can't use the rule to prove the rule. You can't do the rule and say, oh, two negatives make positive. See? Two negatives make positive. Well, no, you just you can't do that. So I'm going to prove the rule without using the rule. So I'm going to say, okay, I don't know what this is. I don't know about any two negatives make positive rule. I'm just going to look at the pattern here. Negative 9, negative 6, negative 3, 0. What has got to be the next answer if you follow the yellow brick road here? What is it doing every time? If you're $9 in debt, $6 in debt, $3 in negative, 0. Positive 3 has got to be next, right? Isn't it going up by 3 every time over there? Positive 3. So what does that mean two negatives do? Got to. Two negatives have to multiply to be positive. Otherwise, the pattern wouldn't work. Math just follows the yellow brick road, the logical pattern. That's all it does. Two negatives multiply to be positive. It's true. Little thing, but, if, but it's impressive if you, if you know it already. So minus 8 squared plus 10 over minus 3. Try that one. Did we get an answer? Too many four thirds? No. Yet. 18 is correct. The answer is 18. Positive 18. Let me show you. So good job. For those of you that already, already know that rule, that's, that's impressive. This is the crucial issue right here. All the rest I know you can do no problem, you know, add them and divide and all that. The really tricky step is what is minus 8 squared? Now we all know it's a 64 of some kind. But is it a positive 64 
or is it a negative 64? That's the real trick, and it's, it is kind of a dumb trick in reality. So, um, anybody know already? Minus 8 squared. Is it positive 64 or negative? It's actually negative, which is weird. You're like, no, no, no. Two negatives make a positive. Right, but it's not two negatives. In other words, let me, let me show you. Let me be extra clear here. If they, this means one negative and two eights multiplied. That's, that's what it means. That's why it's not positive. Um, how would they make it do it the other way? If they gave negative 8 parentheses squared like that, then that would be positive. Do you all see the difference? That would mean two negatives, and yes, two negatives would be positive. So it's a really picky little rule that you have to remember. A 2 power only makes the 8 repeat, not even the minus sign, unless there's parentheses to extend his influence. So that makes sense? The 2 is a power, making something repeat twice, but what does he have power over? Just the 8, not the minus, unless there's parentheses. Then the whole negative 8, yeah, 2 negatives is positive. So with that in mind, then, let's go back up to the, to the original question. So this part is, stays negative, huh? There's only one, ne only the 8 is twice. There's only one negative sign, plus 10 over minus 3. Now, let me get this out of the way here, if you mind, if you don't mind, get that out of the way. So then, um, now the top, minus 64 plus 10, minus 54, two negatives, positive or regular, and if you use your calculator or loan divide by hand, it's 18, positive, regular, 18. Two negatives make a positive, don't they, when they multiply or divide. Would it, would it be true, what if, somebody, what if somebody said to you, hey, two negatives make a positive, just like always. Is that, is that really true? Two negatives always add, subtract, multiply, or divide? No, not quite always. When, when do two negatives make a positive? Multiply or divide, right? Multiply and dividing always go together because multiplying is upside down dividing or vice versa, either way. Right? I hope you're real clear on that. So let me write that out. Two, ne two, two negatives make positive for multiplying or dividing only. For multiplying or dividing only, two negatives make a positive. When you're adding and subtracting, that doesn't happen. Like, let me show you. What if you had minus 10, minus 3? Those are not multiplying, are they? That would, that would still be negative. Negative 13, huh? It didn't make a positive. You with me? Making any sense? All right. So let's let's move on. Let's try. Okay. So try that one. Work, work that one out. So 12 plus 2. I'm going to do the uh, power first. Remember the order? So we'll do the power here. Minus 3 squared. What's that? Positive 9. Everybody good there? Right? Because that minus 3 squared is 2 negatives, positive 9. The bottom, minus 4, minus 3. Minus 7. We good there? Right? So those two negatives did not make a positive because they're not multiplied. Right? You lose $4 and you lose $3, you lost $7. Good to there so far. And then 12 plus 18 over minus 7. What is that? 30 over minus 7? Oh, 17. What, the, what am I doing there? Yeah, there we go. 
Is it all good? And, and there, you don't put a minus in between the two Oh, lines. good question. Yeah, what about, what? Well, yeah, uh, Manuel's question is a good one. Where's the minus go on the fraction? I have it on the bottom. Manuel's saying, shouldn't we put it out here in the front middle, maybe? Is that okay? No. What do you think? Is it just on the bottom? Can you put it in the front? So many questions, huh? All I do is I just ask questions. I don't answer. What do you think? They have to be next because if you divide and not have another negative, the rule says divide or multiply, make it negative or positive. They were minus, minus, positive, minus, plus, negative. Exactly. You're thinking right. It's totally fine to put it in the front. Let me prove it. Let me prove it. So, yeah, just think about what Manuel's saying is, is exactly the good way to think. So just think about numbers. What if you had 4 divided by negative 2? Is, is that different? Here's my question. Is that different than having the minus in the front? Well, no. No, it's got to be the same. Why? Because you know what positive over negative is. It's negative 2, and this one's also negative 2. They're both negative 2. So they're the same. Do you see that? And what, what about if the minus was on the top? That's okay, too. So in other words, when you have a minus on a fraction, it doesn't matter where it is. If there's only one of them, it can be top only, bottom only, or front only. It's all the same. It doesn't matter. If there's just one minus, it's minus, wherever it is. Right? Because all those are different ways to say negative 2, aren't they? Right? Isn't that consistent with the rules we've already learned? Positive divided by negative, or negative divided by positive, or just a negative in front? They're all negative 2, aren't they? That makes sense. Now, what if what if you had? Here's a, here's something I see some um, some people think they think okay if I have a minus in front, that's a minus on both. Is that true? That's not true, is it? Why? Because what is two minuses divided? Right, two negatives make a positive when you multiply or divide, huh? That would be positive, and that's not the same. So. So only one minus. It's the same as only one minus. Top, bottom, front, it's all the same thing. Not two, but one, right? Yeah, good question. Yeah, so, and you know when that'll be important is because our tests are going to be multiple choice. So suppose you're taking the test two weeks from today, and you look, and you get this answer, and option C, whoops, I bumped it there. Option C has um, the negative in the front like that. Should you grab it? Yeah, it's the same. Different way to say the same thing. And the math programs, I use these. I use whatever the publisher of the book, their test generators, they, they do that. They put the negatives in different places. and So you're going to want to make sure you know when two things are really the same. Good question. All right. Okay, 6 minus y over x minus 4. We got x minus 7, y minus 4. Can you plug those in? Plug those in and crank that out. See what you can get there. So here we go. So 6 minus, and what is y? Minus 5 over x minus 7 minus 4. Good to there so far? Just plugged in the x and the y. So what do we get? Here it's um, double negative. Everybody get that? So what now? Now there's the negatives are head to head. They're right on each other. So what do two negatives right on each other do? Positive. It's going to be positive. So it'll be 6 plus 5, won't it? 11. Now, what about the bottom? If you lose $7 and then lose $4, how's your bank account doing? Negative 11. Huh. Good. Now, do we leave 11 over 11? Yeah, what, what's 11 over 11? It's a 1, and the minus on the bottom means it's minus, huh? 
So it's just my all that is just minus one. We good with all this? Questions on that? Easy for you? All right. Oops. So there you go. So try that one. They're telling me what x is. x is minus 7, y is minus 2. So plug in x is minus 7, y is minus 2. Remember now, it's going to become important on this one. When you plug into a formula, you need to put parentheses around. So put parentheses around that minus 7 and parentheses around that minus 2 when you plug them into the formula. So feel free to check with this is a trickier one. Feel free to check those around you. Shelby and I are be wandering around. Let's know if we can help in any way. It's a little trickier. Be careful on the top of that. Feel free to check with those around to see if you're getting the same answer. Okay, so x, we're going to put parenthesis negative 7 squared, plus parenthesis negative 2, and 3 times negative 2. So we get 49 plus negative 2 over negative 6. Good so far? Makes sense? I just square. And that is a positive 49, right? Because this time the square is on the negative. Everybody, that's why it's important you have those parentheses. If you left those off, that would actually be a negative 49, wouldn't it? So that really matters. So far, so good. Now, 49 minus 2. On the top there. 47. And then that's it. There's nothing more we can do with that thing. It doesn't reduce or anything. It's okay to leave the top bigger. <laughs> 